Good evening and welcome to Plugged In. I'm Elaine Lammers filling in for Tammy Johnson. On tonight's show, we have Scott McLaughlin surfing the internet. Chris Soares checks out Youth Leisure Program. Don Goodale gives us a good bridge hand. And Christopher Doty of the Ace Dispatch gives us this week's headlines. Christopher Doty of the H Dispatch grabs our attention with a couple of headlines making news this week. In the headlines this week, Strathroy businesses have weathered another round of break-ins. Business owners say it's not so much the money that's being stolen, it's the cost incurred by the damage that the thieves make when they enter the businesses. Many are considering getting burglar alarms. Meet a man whose family has kept Strathroy on its feet for over 60 years. Nick Homerodian started in the shoe repair business when he was 19 back in 1947, and he's still going strong. It's not very uncommon for young children to get computers these days as gifts, but not so with young Lance Dalkin, the 12-year-old boy who's living with a brain tumor, recently received a brand new computer from the Sunshine Foundation. His response when he got the gift, quote, oh cool, oh cool, oh cool, unquote. Martin Ramsey also has what he wants. He's a collector of bottle openers and corkscrews. However, he's still looking for an elusive Pepsi Cola opener. Do you have one? Read all about it. The Strathroy Junior B Rockets have made first place title in the Western Junior B League. Their opponents in the first round of playoffs will be the Aylmer Aces. We have a story and photographs about that. And on the back page, our columnist Kath Wooden talks about sharing her home with unwanted pests. And we don't mean the type that she may be related to. We're talking about bats and mice and spiders and all sorts of creepy stuff like that. From the Strathroy Age Dispatch where the walls may not have mice in them, but they certainly have ears on them. I'm Christopher Doty for Plugged In. For more information on these headlines, pick up your copy of this week's H Dispatch. Looking for information? The internet could be the place to find it. Scott McLaughlin has more. Catching a wave on the internet can be a mind-blowing and educational experience. Using a personal computer, you can trudge through the vast and dense world of cyberspace without necessarily being cyber-minded. It's likely that you've heard about the internet or even used it, but if you haven't, Fortner McKinley, owner-operator of Strathroy Computers, gives us the scoop on what the internet is. Years ago, there used to be uh, bulletin boards where people would dial into for information. Originally started, uh, the internet originally started at universities and it's just expanded from the universities and now it's it has made the world so small that from Strathroy you can dial on your service provider and um, download or get information or speak to people in Taiwan, Japan, pretty near anywhere. You can find almost anything on the web. This makes it appealing to anyone looking for information on their choice of interest. It's no wonder why the internet is regarded as an excellent educational tool. It's, it's made it so that um, um, someone in, in um, Strathroy High School can get information from um, the University of Southern California uh, within seconds, which five years ago right. um, didn't happen. The internet is gaining popularity, but have you ever used it? No, I haven't. Uh, do you think it's a fad or do you think it's here to stay? Definitely think it's here to stay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, do you think it's a fad or is it here to stay? I think it's here to stay. No, I haven't personally, but all my friends do. How about yourself? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> do you think it's a fad or is it here to stay? I think it's here to stay. I think it's here to stay because it's like taking people's jobs away and stuff. Do you think the internet's a fad or is it here to stay? I think it's probably here to stay once people get more and more familiar with it. I have the internet at my home. Do you think the internet's a fad or is it here to stay? Here to stay. A 
couple times. Do you think it's a fad or here to stay? This is going to be around for a while. Here's what you need to get connected to the internet. You'll need a 486 computer, which can either be IBM compatible or Macintosh based. A modem with a baud rate of 28.8 is preferred. The baud is the speed the modem will download information at. The higher the number, the better. Minimum of 8 megabytes RAM or random access memory. Next, you'll need an internet provider to channel you into the World Wide Web. A typical provider can cost from $20 to $30 a month for unlimited access to the internet. And of course, you'll need a phone line to make it all happen. Wow, it seems the internet is just going to keep gaining popularity. And for good reason. Ready to surf the net? I am. If only I could figure out how to turn this thing on. This is Scott McLaughlin reporting for Plugged In. We'll be right back with Chris Soros and the sports after this break. Sharing a healthier future with participation. They're in the game for all the right reasons. Getting together with friends and having fun. By the way, they're also building a better future. Socially, mentally, and physically. Regular activity. Another way that we're all sharing a healthier future. Participation. Is your youngster at home with nothing to do? Plugged in reporter Chris Soares looks at leisure activities for the kids. Every week on Mondays and Wednesday nights from 6 to 9 p.m., the Strasbourg Community Resource Center uses the gyms of Our Lady Immaculate and St. Vincent de Paul schools to bring kids together for a night of fun. Program director at the center, Krista McMullen, says the program was established for the kids. That's why Community Resource Center thought that we needed a place where uh, children that can't get involved in organized soccer, hockey, and pay for events would have somewhere to go where they could play sports and get actively involved. So we came up with a program, me and Brent Cushman came up with the idea about two years ago and away we went. Young Daniel Kudo says he has a lot of fun when he comes out and he got involved in the program thanks to word of mouth. Well I heard about it uh, through my friends and uh, they came here before so they uh, introduced me to it. Uh, it's a lot of fun, you get to try different sports, uh, team, like play with uh, friends, have a lot of fun. But after it's all said and done, the bottom line is that if kids do not know what's going on, they just won't come out. McMullen explains. The program's been running for two years. Um, it's more successful the more it's advertised through the schools. If the schools get actively involved in helping advertising it, like at St. Vincent, at OLI to a certain extent, it uh, a lot of more kids come out. It's word of mouth though, I start out with one kid and end up with 40 or 50, so. If you have a son or daughter at home that wishes to participate in these kind of sports, the Community Resource Center has the sessions Monday nights at Our Lady Immaculate Public School from 6 to 7.30 for the younger kids and 7.30 to 9 for the older kids. Also Wednesday nights at St. Vincent de Paul Public School, 6 to 7.30 and 7.30 to 9. The Strathair Rockets open up their 1997 playoffs against the Elmer Aces this week. Make sure you tune in to next week's Plugged In as I'll recap the opening series for you. This is Chris Soares reporting for Plugged In. In this week's book review, Don Goodale tells us how to defend a bridge hand. I'm probably not a good person to review this week's book, How to Defend a Bridge Hand by William S. Root, because I'm very impatient, and defense is by far the most difficult part of the game. When I'm on defense, my impulse is to say, well, let's get it over with, get on to the next hand, maybe I'll get a chance to play the contract. You know, if I just squint through that lens, I can see that you're that type of player too. Too impatient to be good on defense. Well, maybe there's hope for both of us. Because William Root, Bill Root as his friends call him, is one of the world's greatest bridge teachers. Well, here's what one of his peers says about him. This, as far as I know, is the first book in the 68-year history of the game to deal comprehensively 
in an organized way with every aspect of this vital area. There is a wealth of illustrative deals and quizzes, and as one would expect from a teacher, the deals are on exactly the right level. That's the tribute paid by Alan Truscott. Now, I can't read you too much of Bill Root's own writing because he doesn't mess around with principles, general advice. He gets right down to cases. In fact, he can't write five lines without coming to an actual sample. And at the end, where you might be looking for a nice conclusion, huh, exactly five lines, and they all relate to the example he's just given. He's got literally hundreds of very specific cases in the 410 pages of this book. Now, I am not about to, mem to memorize 410 pages of examples and sort of sit and wait till I get a chance to use each one, maybe next week, maybe next month, <laughs> maybe next century. And I don't think you are either. But what is great about this book is that you can dig into it, open it anywhere you like, you will find something that is interesting, useful, and clearly explained. And when you get tired of it, you can put it down. Or uh, maybe you can do what I do. Reach for this one, How to Play a Bridge Hand by William S. Root. For Plugged In, I'm Don Goodale. Good evening and welcome to Plugged In. Tonight on the show, Scott McLaughlin reports on vehicle theft. Chris Soros checks out the martial arts. Clara Thomas reviews the book Tamarin Mem. And after this, Christopher Doty gives us this week's headlines. <laughs>